name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have this beautiful, long passage from the beginning, very beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, that we know of as the genealogy of Christ. The long list of all the funny names that we read from the Old Testament, letting us know all of the generations that came before and led up to the birth of Christ. We're celebrating, of course, today and tomorrow. And so whenever I think about these reading of the names and the genealogy, it always reminds me of this idea that we are part of a long chain that has come before us. That the Christ doesn't just magically appear from just random people. That he is born of very specific people. And those people come from other people. That it takes some kind of a tremendous faith to be able to do what they did. Of course, the Virgin Mary, to be able to become the mother of God. Also Joseph, as we read about him being conflicted about the virgin birth. But the idea that these people who are holy and who have great faith in God, they don't just fall out of the sky. They are taught that faith by those that came before them, by their parents, by their grandparents, by all of their ancestors, going back, as we heard, 14 generations and 14 generations and 14 generations. And so I think it's a beautiful reminder for us to remember that we're part of a chain and that because of that, we have a responsibility to be a strong link in that chain, to realize that we were given a blessing to have our faith in Christ and that it took struggle and sacrifice for people that came before us to be able to pass that along to us. And so then we have to wonder and we have to ask ourselves, well, gee, what am I doing with that? That great gift that I was given, am I holding on to it? Am I honoring the struggle and the sacrifice of those that came before me to make sure that I'm keeping it strong and I'm passing it along? to make sure that I'm passing it to the next generation. And I was thinking about that as we were beginning the liturgy and we sang the first petitions and we heard the beautiful voices of the kids in the choir singing the Kyrie Eleisons. And what a wonderful inspiration it is to remind us that the next generation is here and has to be taught what has come before them, that the chain has to be kept strong and unbreakable, that we don't want to be the weak link that lets generations of faith fall apart because we're choosing other things. And so, but that also begs a question and a reminder for us to think about. The idea that while we have to protect what we were given, we also recognize that we should choose the best parts and we should strengthen the chain. We should try to make the deposit of faith stronger and stronger and stronger. So that decisions that were made, traditions that were passed on, can be upheld, but strengthened. And this is a time of year for ritual. We all have our wonderful family traditions. We all grew up celebrating certain things, and we remember those things, and we honor them. We think about what it was like for us when we were a child at Christmas, and we remember how we decorated our house, what our parents did, what meals they cooked. We can remember the smells, we can remember the different things, and it conjures up within us the feeling of the birth of Christ and the connection that we have. But we want to make sure we're holding on to the best parts and that we're constantly improving and strengthening things and that it's okay for us to improve upon and to build upon the tradition. It's not enough just to carry it and say, well, this is what my parents did, so I guess I should do this too, and that's enough. Let's make it stronger. Let's make it better. And there's lots of different things and different ways that we can do that practically. I grew up like a good Greek, never going to church on Christmas. We never went to church on Christmas. I can't remember that as a child, getting up and going Christmas morning to church. I just didn't have that 
Paradosi, that wasn't the tradition or the custom in my family. It wasn't what I was taught. But I recognized as I got older and I became a father myself, that that was something that I wanted to pass down on to my kids. I wanted to teach them when December 25th comes around, it's a big feast day, we get up, we go to church. Forget about cooking, forget about hosting, forget about presents. All that stuff comes afterwards. It'll take care of itself. Put Christ first. Make sure first and foremost, we're coming to his house to celebrate his feast, his birth. It's his birthday. And he's inviting us to his house. We have to be there. And so just because we were taught something doesn't mean I say, well, I never went to church when I was a kid, so I guess I don't have to go to church, and I guess I don't have to teach my kids to go to church. That's not passing down the good traditions of our ancestors. Passing down the good traditions is remembering and keeping the best parts and making them stronger and stronger. It's realizing that many of us had a yaya, a grandmother or a grandfather in the Choryo that fasted so strictly they put monks and nuns to shame. That on Fridays would do nothing but have ayazmo. On Wednesdays would say prayers constantly. When feast days would come around, they would sense the house. I can remember my mother going around the house with her little censer on big feast days and sensing the house with dried out orange peels that she would light on fire and a little piece of livani. Those are the traditions we want to keep and we want to strengthen. People come to me all the time and say, Father, oh, you would have loved my yaya. She was such a pious woman. My grandfather, they were so pious. You know, we're not like that now. And I would say, why aren't we like that now? And above and beyond that, to do more than the last generation, to keep the strength of the faith as strong as we can and pass it on to the next generation. That's what we do when we honor those who have come before us. And today we honor on the Sunday before Christmas, which also happens to be Christmas Eve, we honor the ancestors, we honor the forefathers, we honor everyone that came before the birth of Christ. And so what we want to honor those ancestors in our lives, our parents, our grandparents, and our great-grandparents. We honor them by keeping the faith. We honor them by not breaking the chain. And we honor them by making the chain stronger and our faith stronger to pass it down to the next generation of our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren each and every day. Amen.